Starting with the head of Horry County's Health and Student Services, she used the word overwhelming during this week's school board meeting. Now, while the state recommends 20 to 25 students per counselor, some Horry County schools are taking on 40 to 45 right now. As a result, the district is trying out a new program. Whether it's anxiety, depression, self-harm concerns, um, has certainly been an increase since we've been out during the pandemic. A spokesperson for Horry County Schools says that's why the district is launching a new mental health program called Care Solis. It's an outside provider. They are known to be able to provide services for K through 12 school systems, and they have been very successful in other school districts. It connects students, families, and staff with mental health counselors and is available in 50 languages and 24-7. So if there's something that happens in the middle of the night or anything like that, it's drug and alcohol uh, services as well, because actually we do see some of those issues within our school system as well. She says it comes as students take on a lot and might not know where to go for help. There's a lot of um, pressures that are put on, on students. Um, the, the competition of grades and sports and everything. And she says that is a very important note for parents. While this generation talks about mental health issues a lot more, she says being there to listen and find help creates a better Horry County for everyone. It's more than just grades and getting good grades. It's, it's the person as a whole, the whole social emotional person. And tonight the CDC reports students who feel more connected are much less likely to feel hopeless now. But first, we're, we're looking at this study that came out of the CDC today. This is brand new information showing that over a third of high schoolers had poor mental health during the pandemic and 44 percent felt helpless. Now they're also reporting that 55% felt emotionally abused by parents, 11% felt uh, physically abused by a parent and over a quarter there had a parent or an adult in the house lose a job. Now, uh, this is presented by the CDC on a call with journalists today and doctors say that there is hope, however, in students feeling connected at school. Decades of research have demonstrated that youth who feel connected at school are less likely to experience negative health outcomes related to mental health, substance use, violence, and sexual risk. And that this protection that connectedness offers can last into adulthood. Now, in those findings, the CDC is reporting that students who feel connected are much less likely to feel hopeless or consider suicide and half as likely to attempt suicide. Now, as for the program, Horry County Schools is launching. They will look at the feedback this summer and then decide if they'll keep it for the next year or try out another service. There's a lot to cover tonight as there are dozens of elections that will be hitting the voter ballots in June and then again in November, like you mentioned. Georgetown County has multiple county council seats up for grabs. And in the PD region, Dillon, Darlington, Marion, Marlboro, and Florence all also have county council seats up as well. Now, taking a closer look right here in Horry County, there are a few candidates who may risk their political say for the next few years if they do not win their races that they're entered in. Facing off in the primary election in June, one of those candidates taking that risk is current Horry County Councilman Johnny Vaught. Vaught is running for County Council's chair seat, currently held by Johnny Gardner. Gardner is in the race, hoping to hold his seat as well. They're running against two other Republican candidates, Mark Lazarus, who was previously the chairman for council, but he lost his seat after losing to Gardner back in 2018, and Katrina Morrison, a vocal resident from Little River. And just up the road from Horry County Council, Horry County School Board has several opening spots as well as board members are throwing their name into the hat for the school board chairman race. Helen Smith and David Cox, who currently serve on the school board, will be familiar names on the voter ballot, along with a third Republican candidate. That's Daryl Ricketts. Ricketts is currently an Horry County Schools employee. He's a teacher, a teacher, excuse me, over at Socasty High School. And now the Horry County School Board Chair is up for election because Ken Richardson, who currently holds the seat, he's running for the District 7 U.S. House Representative seat. If Richardson loses his election, he will not hold a political titer, title as he cannot also run to hold his seat as the Horry County School Board Chair. For District 7, there are 10 candidates running for this spot. 
Now, some of those candidates are state representatives, one being Russell Fry, who leaves the District 106 seat up for grabs and puts Fry's name in the same position as Richardson. If he does not win this election, he'll hold no political title. Republican incumbent Tom Rice is running in the election again after holding the seat for a decade. And Mark McBride, the former Republican Myrtle Beach mayor, will also be on the ballot, but just barely. According to the South Carolina Elections Commission, McBride sent in his filing form just 14 minutes before elections closed earlier today at noon. And, you know, the funny thing is, this is really just the tip of the iceberg when we talk about yes. political and election season. Yes, Jen, I can't even tell you. This is probably a quarter, probably mm -hmm. less, mm -hmm. for the number of elections that are going to be hitting those voter ballots in just a few months. So there's a lot to brush up on. And tonight on ABC 15 News at 11, mm -hmm. we're actually going to cover a few more of those. I'll be breaking down some elections that we're going to be talking about for big races for the state, for the entire Palmetto mm -hmm. State, including the governor's race, the U.S. Senate, and who could take over Molly Spearman's seat as the state's superintendent of education. <laughs>